Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, classmates. I am Rika, and with me are Mr. Nieves and Mr. Liko. We are the group six, and we are going to discuss chapter six, which is about the design for quality. But before we proceed to the actual lesson, let me first provide some context saan nga ba iikot itong chapter six. If natatandaan natin yung pinakaunang chapter, Dinefine doon kung ano ba yung quality and yung mga characteristics ng isang services and products na nagpo-fall into high quality. Nag-provide din yung mga reporters noon and si Sir Dan ng iba't ibang definition kung paano ba nagiging quality or makalidad ang isang bagay or service. Pero we still ended up sa consumer or customer na mag avail ng mismong product or services. And sabi doon, it still depends on who will avail that products or services on how they will perceive something as of high quality. Pwede yung isang customer nakikita niya na quality yung isang product because galing siya sa isang well-known brand or kaya expensive. Pwede naman yung isang customer nakikita as quality ang isang product or service kasi mura siya and kunwari may mga freebies pa. But if we are looking into a business perspective, Siyempre, we want our product to be categorized as of high quality, di ba? Kaya ngayon, nagkakaroon ng tinatawag natin na design for quality. So, this design for quality, it is a process. Isang comprehensive and elaborated process. And of course, hindi yan madali. Maraming um, involved dyan, and if a company is creating something and want it to be of high quality, from the top management hanggang sa kaibaba, ibabang staff nila, involved yan dito sa may a process ng design for quality. So these are just the contents ng chapter na to, itong buong chapter 6. Now let's proceed to the proper lesson. Design, innovation, and improvement. Yung mga products or services, those are designed daw para magkaroon ng revenue yung mga company through selling it to the customer na nakikita na may value yung product or services na ino-offer ng isang company. Pero again, yung mga company na yan, may mga specific target market yan kung saan nakadesign lang yung product or services nila sa specific market na hinikater nila. Sabi nga, if it is too expensive for you, then you are not the target market. So, ibig sabihin, hindi design ng product or services na yon para sa'yo. But before makapag-produce ang isang business ng products or services na designed to give them revenue or designed na mabili ng customer, yung mga businesses na yon dapat yung management nila is designed din, di ba, to do such thing. According nga sa book, dapat yung leadership and management ng isang business is designed na makapag-produce ng quality products or services na mababalik lahat ng efforts nila. And that indicates na sa lahat ng businesses, especially yung mga successful ones, meron silang iba't ibang design elements in almost every facet of, uh, of their organization. To fully understand ano nga ba ang design, nag-provide ng definition ang Collins Scoville English Language Dictionary. So ang design daw is the way in which something has, has been planned and made, including what it looks like and how well it works. Kayo, di ba kapag naririnig nyo yung word na design, di ba parang inaasyam na rin natin na, ay di ba pinagplanuhan yan, pinag-isipan niya ng mabuti. Kasi di ba design eh. And hindi lang yung panglabas na anyo yung kinoconsider natin if we want yung, um, if we want na, if we want this to design something of if we are designing something. Dapat useful din ito and maayos mo siya magagamit talaga. For example, sa isang bahay, um, Hindi ba yung pagdedesign ng bahay, pinagpaplanuhan niya ng mabuti? Ang mahaba nga yung pagpaplano sa bahay, di ba? Kasi kinoconsider mo talaga lahat from the equipments, pati yung safety, safety ng mga construction workers. Tapos syempre yung mga engineer, consider nila yung tibay ng bahay from... Pero hindi, yung tibay ng bahay, hindi lang yung puro ganda lang ng bahay, di ba? So bali magiging kulang yung pag, pagpaplano ng design kapag... Yung isang bahay, maganda nga, tapos konting um, lindol lang, kunwari, ganun, or konting um, yanig lang ng lupa is guguhuna, di ba? So, wag naman sana ganun. Ang point lang ng definition ng provided ng Colin Scoville English Language Dictionary, ang design is hindi lang siya for appearance. Kasama rin sa characteristics ng design yung usefulness ng isang bagay or service. 
When applied sa business concept, alam naman natin na customer are a major consideration ng mga business kapag gumagawa sila ng products or services. Nakadepende kasi yung success ng isang product or services kung paano iperceive yon ng mga customer. Kaya yung design ng product or services is nakadepende talaga sa my customers. Lahat ng mga businesses, kailangan nila raw i-update yung mga products nila. Kasi yun yung mga needs ng mga tao eh. Um, nag evolve yan yung mga needs ng mga tao. Hindi lang nakastick yung public sa isang service or, or product even after 20 years. Kasi syempre habang mas nagiging modernized yung mundo, nag upgrade na rin yung mga needs and wants ng mga tao. Meron nga tayong kasabihan na walang kakontentohan yung mga tao, di ba? Parang sa cellphone lang. Um, hindi pa pala sapat yung basta may camera ka sa phone na naiisa lang yung lens, yung mga ganun. Kailangan pa pala tatlo or apat, di ba? Even sa fashion natin, taon-taon, iba-iba rin yung mga nauuso. Ang point is, need mag-adapt ng mga businesses to changes through innovation. By innovation, hindi naman kasi ibig sabihan yan, palagi kang magpo-provide ng bago sa market. Pwede naman mag-upgrade ka lang ng existing product mo, tapos i-upgrade mo lang ng konti yun, konting development lang, tapos yun na yung ipaprovide mo sa market para makater yung current needs and wants ng market. Kasi posible na kapag nag-innovate daw ang isang uh, business, pwedeng new or existing product, nababawasan din yung operational cost ng business mo and makakapag-generate ka ng higher revenue. It also says here that innovation includes an increase in the use of IT-based technologies in design, communication, management, manufacturing, and service delivery. Kung ngayon kasi naman talaga natin titingnan, modernize na yung mundo, yung environment na ginagalawan natin, so syempre yung mga bagong product or services, more on technology talaga yung mga improvements. Lalo ngayon na nasa pandemic tayo, di ba ang dami naglalabasan ng mga digital tools na mas pinapadali yung buhay natin. Sa ibang businesses raw, dominant yung dalawang type ng innovation which are the technology-led and the marketing-led. So technology-led innovation pertains to advanced discipline of rapid technology experimentation. Basta ito yung mga changes sa product or services na technology-fueled like sa hotels, um, yung mga PMS or property management system na tinatawag. Example yan ng technology-led innovation. Kasi di ba dati fill up, fill up lang naman kapag mag-check in ka talaga sa hotel? And then, yung marketing-led innovation naman is the adoption of a new marketing strategy that involves consideration modification in product design, packaging, placement, promotion, or pricing. I believe ito yung mga changes internally no? sa mismong product and then ilalaunch ulit nila in public with yung marketing strategy. Tingin ko din dito mag-fall yung mga products na bago yung packaging tapos may mga commercial sila kunwari na Mas pinalaki, mas pinasarap, yung ganun, yung more creamier, yung mga ganong commercial. For short, marketing-led pertains to new marketing methods for existing products. Pero yung mga successful or leading products and services daw ngayon, wala sa dalawa na yon yung innovation na ginagawa nila or ginagamit nila. Yung mga innovators of the leading product or services kasi ngayon, they are using the market-led innovation for their developments. So, iba po ang market-led innovation than the marketing-led innovation. So, kanina, yung marketing-led innovation is about just sa marketing functions. And then, yung market-led innovation naman, ito yung developments ng product or service is nakabase doon sa needs and wants ng public. Kaya nga, from the word itself, market-led. Yung mga businesses na gumagamit nitong market-led innovation, they are identifying, examining, and considering the demands of people. Dito ang focus is customer mismo and then tsaka sila magpo-provide ng services or products na masasatisfy yung demands ng customer na yon. Sabi nga mas effective raw to kasi parang guarantee naman na nga na may bibili na at bibili ng in-offer mo since in-examine mo muna what are the current trends or demands tapos tsaka mo yon i-offer sa market. Everything we experience in or from an organization is the result of a design decision or lack of one. Kapag in-apply ulit sa service, pwedeng sabihin na kapag quality ang provision ng service, ibig sabihin maayos ang design decision. If hindi quality ang provision of service, pwedeng sabihin na wala silang maayos sa design decision or as in wala talaga totally. So this concept applies not just to tangible things like products and services, but also to the intangibles like the systems and processes mismo in the organization. 
kung saan naapektuhan ng generation of products and delivery of services. After all, yung design decision kasi talaga is more on internal management naman. Design is about combining function and for, form to achieve fitness for purpose, be it an improvement to a supersonic aircraft, the synthesis of a new drug, the development of a new building, and so on. Diba sabi nga kanina, ang pagdadesign is may pagpaplano talaga. It involves how it looks and how well it works. So syempre, kapag nagdidesign tayo ng isang bagay, palagi natin naiisip para saan ba talaga yon. For example, if we are designing an F&B outlet, kinoconsider natin yung comfort ng customer tsaka yung convenient ng employees, di ba? And if makakagalaw ba ng maayos kasi yun naman talaga yung purpose ng F&B outlet. Makapag-provide ng service sa customer ng maayos and maging comfortable yung customer habang kumakain sila. And once na ma-achieve na yung purpose na yon, magkakaroon naman tayo ng another goal and that is to maintain that customer or to turn that customer into returning or loyal customer sa may F&B outlet na yon. So magkakaroon na ng reassessment ng customer demands kasi magbabago naman talaga ang needs and wants ng mga tao. Kagaya nga na sinabi ko kanina. Dito na rin papasok yung innovation. So magpa-provide sila ng bagong product or pwedeng existing product na may development lang ng konti kasi hanggat may bago kang in-offer, magiging interested ba rin yung public sa, sa business mo? Depende na lang din sa organization anong type ng innovation ng strategy nila. So, yun lang naman yung uh, sinasabi sa may concept ng designing. So, di ba napakalawak kapag ka dinedefine ng word na design? Napakahaba kasing proseso niyan and kapag in-apply sa iba't ibang organization, iba-iba rin yung elements na ginagamit syempre. Pero one thing is for sure, kahit na iba-ibang element or way paggamitin or i-define ng word na design, ang goal pa rin ng pagde-design is to enhance the quality ng kung ano man in-offer ng isang business, tangible or intangible pa man yan. The design process. As an individual and as a student, every time na may ginagawa tayo, di ba gusto natin hanggat maaari is quality or best yung gawa natin. So I don't know lang sa iba pero um, yung kasi yung ano yung palagi kong gusto mangyari. And then going back, so paano ba tayo nakapag-produce ng quality output? Syempre through commitment. So kahit ma mahirap, push tayo ng push kasi nga meron tayong standards and gusto natin ganun ng kalabasan. And if na-relate ulit sa business, ganun din naman. Kailangan din ng commitment, commitment but mostly part, uh, but, but most particularly commitment ng senior management. Kaya senior management kasi sila yung mas pinakamatagal na sa organization so gamay na talaga nila yung operation doon. So through the commitment daw ng senior management nagkakaroon ng quality sa design process and I ensure ang good relationships and good communication uh, each departments and even sa supply chain. Pero doesn't mean kasi nakapag -commit, committed ka or merong commitment isa hamakin na lahat no kapag yeah, Kapag nasa business ka, isahamakin mo na lahat kahit na hindi na kaya ng resources or power ng organization. Baka kasi sa kagustuhan ng isang business na masatisfy ang demands ng customer is mag-design or mag-launch na lang basta-basta ng mga product or services kahit na hindi naman gaya. As in the marketing or operation interfaces, hindi raw kasi acceptable na mag-design ng product, service, system, or process that the customer wants but the organization is incapable of achieving because in order to gain customer satisfaction no and loyalty into products and services the conformance aspect of quality must be present and the operational processes must be capable of producing to the design the design process often concerns technological innovation in response to or in anticipation of changing market requirements and trends in technology kagaya nga na sinasabi ko kanina na because super modernized na ang mundo Halos lahat talaga ng innovation ng nangyayari is technological talaga. Those companies with impressive record of product or service-led growth have demonstrated a state-of-the-art approach to innovation based on three principles. So itong three, three principles na to are like standards when it comes to innovation no? um, para maging successful ka sa pag-innovate. And this is the first principle, the strategic balance. It says here that the strategic balance is needed between product or service and process development to ensure that product and service innovation maintains market position, while process innovation ensures the production risks in safety, quality, and productivity are effectively controlled and reduced. 
So, sinasabi lang dito na kapag nag innovate ka sa business, dapat balance pa rin yung attention mo sa other aspects ng business mo. Baka mamaya innovate ka ng innovate, masyado ka nagkukokus about sa pag-launch or develop ng uh, bagong product or service, tapos wala ka naman pala, wala naman na pala kayong funds or resources. E din na bankrupt pa kayo, no? So, ibig sabihin lang nito, dapat kahit na nag innovate ka, kaya mong pag-stayin yung existing products mo sa market position nito while still minimizing cost due to productivity. The second principle is the top management approach. I think it's a, it's a common knowledge no, na yung initiatives to innovate a new or existing product is galing sa top management. Siyempre, they are the ones who have legitimate authority. Eh, kaya sila rin yung magdedesisyon kung ano ba dapat gawin sa management. Of course, para mag, mas maging successful din ang process ng innovation, dapat merong full commitment ang top management para masuportahan ng bawat aspect ng business. Para magkaroon na rin ng balance eh, uh, sa other aspect, kagaya nga nang sinabi ko kanina. Direct control should be concentrated on critical decision points kasi usually once magkamali dito, malaki yung possibility na maging, na di maging successful ang development sa innovation. And since over-meddling by very senior people in day-to-day -day project management can delay and demotivate staff. So alam naman natin na seniors uh, medyo may pagkamadiwara sila and medyo marami silang napupuna palagi. Pero actually, yung iba lang naman, ah, hindi ko naman nila lahat. So wala naman kasi yung iba na aambag sa organization. Ganun. And as a young member ng organization na punong-puno ng creative ideas, nakaka-demotivate naman kasi talaga yung ganong klase ng environment. The last principle is teamwork. So ito alam naman natin to palagi basta involve yung maraming grupo ng tao or grupo-grupo ganon. Palaging meron dapat teamwork para maging successful. So ito super importante yan kapag ina-apply sa business tapos innovation pa ang usapan. Since nag innovate nga ang isang business, lahat ng department or member ng organization is gumagalaw dapat yan and mayroong constant departmental communication para if may problems na na-encounter na sa-solve ka agad. Ang approach daw ng teamwork sa business na nag innovate is hindi super formal kahit na business setting pa. Kasi kapag daw super formal ang approach, parang stiff daw eh. Um, kadalasan nawawala yung mga creative, unique ideas ng mga employees. So nawawala yung mga tao nag initiate and share ng kanilang insights. So ang approach daw is urgent pa rin but, uh, but informal para meron pa ding fun in working and designing. So those are the three principles. Kasama yan, of course, sa may product or service creation process or tinatawag din na PSCP. It should not be this underestimated since doon nakasalalay whether papatok ba yung product or service uh, na in-offer. However, despite that reason, madalas pa rin daw na pagsasawalang bahala itong PSCP. Many people associate design with styling of products and we know na isa, isa ito sa pinaka-importanting aspect kapag nagka-create or design ng isang product or service. Pero may mga products or services din tayo na importante ang secondary design. So ano ba yung mga secondary design na yon? Ito yung mga packaging, customer service arrangements, maintenance routines, warranty details, and their fulfillment, spare part availability, and etc. So yung, yun yung mga aspect na yon. Uh, yun pa lang mga yon aspect siya ng design na naapektuhan din yung quality ng product or service. Example ng industry that has learned much about the secondary design feature of its product product is personal computer. So di ba mostly naman kapag bumibili ng computer tapos nagtagal na, hindi naman yung styling ng computer mismo yung complaint ng mga user na yun, di ba? So many of the problems of customer dissatisfaction experience in this market have not been product design features but problems with user support, availability and loading of software and applications. So, bali yung design and marketing of after-sales arrangement ay yung mga um, importanting component ng design activity for technically complicated products or service systems, like the personal computer nga. If yung pinagbilahan ko na rin ng customer ng personal computer is committed sa pag-provide ng quality service, then yung company na yon dapat meron silang arrangement of manufacturing equipment to allow for easy access for repair and needed maintenance or simply use as intended expands the scope of design quality management into the supply chain and contractors on their product or service creation process. But if we are talking about construction industry, ang laking difference niyan 
ng design sa kanila compared sa other industry. Sabi nga dito sa Sabi nga dito, the process of assembling a building, the selection and positioning of, a, of equipment is already a design task. Pati na rin yung selection of technology, the decision between using cast in place or prefabricated components is also essentially a design task. So ang point lang naman dito is sa construction industry, yung consideration nila sa design process is, is a much larger role unlike sa nabanggit kanina. Kasi totoo din naman, di ba, ang daming dapat na i-consider kapag gumagawa ka ng kahit na maliit na bahay lang. But of course, it is not only the construction industry na maraming i-consider sa design process. Kasi sabi nga, it is at the design stage that such important matters as variability of details, reproducibility, technical risk of failure due to workmanship, ease of use in operation, maintainability, and etc. should receive detailed consideration. Design stage kasi is like your starting point now when you are operating a business. So mag-design ka dapat ng something na parang kahit na hindi kailangan ng tao is nakikita nila yon or na-attract sila and bibilihin nila. Sabi nga, ng, sabi nga may ano tayo, kasabihan tayo na yung mga entrepreneurs daw, nagpo-provide sila ng mga products or services na hindi nag exist sa market. Na hindi naman talaga kailangan sa market para napapaisip nila yung public or yung market na kailangan nilang bilhin yung product or service na yon. If design quality is taking care of all aspects of the customer's requirements, including cost, production, sale, and easy use, and maintainability of products and services, then designing must take place in all aspects of identifying the need, including need for change, developing that which satisfies the need, Checking the conformance to the need and ensuring that the need is satisfied. So this part is just a summary lang naman ng ano, ng aspects na nabanggit ko kanina. So first, di ba, meron tayong identifying the need, including need for change. Di ba parang uh, maging successful naman talaga kasi ang isang product or service, dapat kinonsider muna natin yung current trend or yung current market need ng public bago tayo mag-create or design mismo ng product or service. Parang ang impractical naman kasi, di ba, kung gagawa tayo ng isang product or service na hindi naman talaga kailangan sa market. So example, ano ba ngayon yung mga kailangan sa market? Di ba, mga sanitary products or kaya new hospital, di ba? Basta ngayon, something na related sa improvement ng health or kaya hygiene. After naman ma-identify ang need, after ma-identify ang need, syempre meron ng development of design concepts and prototypes yung pangalawa na nabanggit kanina. So I, I believe dito yung sa pangalawa, nandito na yung mga maraming considerations sa design process. It is the process of presenting needs in some physical form, initially as a solution and then as a specific configuration or arrangement of material resources, equipment, and people. Next, I checking the conformance to the need, yung pangatlo kanina. This is a technique kung saan pinapakita if may nabago ba nung na-release nila yung bagong product or service. For example, nagkaroon ba ng uh, for example, nagkaroon ng panibagong hospital, so napansin ba nila na nagkaroon ng counting deaths kasi nagagamot na yung mga maraming tao. Unlike that, di ba? Kapag nagpunta sa hospital, um na nadedenay or na ano pa yung mga tao, di ba, hindi natatanggap. So ganun dito sinasabi lang if may na-address ba na problems or needs through comparing yung previous events with the existing reference model. Last is ensuring that the need is satisfied. So once na-launch na ang product or service, hindi pwedeng ano, hayaan na lang yon sa market na para bang, ay bahala na siya doon. Sure naman ako na masasatisfy ng product or service ko yung needs nila. So hindi po ganun. Kailangan kapag we are in a business, yung mindset natin palagi is kailangan kong i-ensure na na-address ko yung needs ng market. So kasi sabi nga rin sa kanina, di ba, napakabilis lang magbago ng mga needs and wants ng mga tao. Design, like any other activity, must be carefully managed. A flowchart of the various stages and activities involved in the design and development process appears in this figure 6.1, the design and development process. So first, here is uh, create a design and development planning program. So by doing this, kasi, no, um, it will address the complexity ng gagawin nyo. So meron kayong something na mag-guide sa inyo throughout the process. So, di ba, ganun naman talaga kapag uh, uh, may pagwaplano, mas formal at nakikita talaga kung ano ang mga dapat gawin. 
Second, provide design practice codes and procedures. So, dapat every practices and procedures ay fully explained or properly discussed sa lahat ng member ng organizations and dapat documented din. Para if may problem na mangyari, may babalikan sila ng document para makita saan sila nagkamali. Third, assign the design activities. So, this is where the delegation of activities will happen. Siyempre, sa design process, involved yan lahat ng members ng organization from top to bottom. But of course, you are not just going to assign tasks sa member na basta-basta. No? Dapat suitable and qualified din sila to do such tasks. Fourth is to identify organizational and technical interfaces. So dito sinasabi lang na hindi mo lang i-consider kunwari kung ano ba yung nangyayari internally, internally or within the organization. Dapat i-consider mo rin yung mga factors externally. Fifth, identify the design input requirements. So kanina yung mga practices and procedures. Ngayon naman yung mga design input requirements such as performance use, aesthetics, technical designs, packaging, storage, reliability, maintainability, and disposal. So those should be clearly defined in this stage. Sixth is to identify the design output requirements. So design output, ibig sabihin, this is where the results of a design effort at each stage face and the total design effort will be seen. Sabi nga kanina, once ma-launch na ang product or service mo, hindi na doon matatapos yung process kasi meron pa tayong kasunod and that is to establish design review procedures. So this one is to ensure na yung product or service design are meeting the requirements and achieve yung objectives that your business is aiming for. Dito rin makikita if there are problems pa ba sa design and of course, ma-address din dito yun. Eight is to investigate new techniques and evaluate new ideas. So this is necessary, of course, to establish reliability and safety implications, especially if yung technique or method mo nagagamitan sa design process and development is bago lang. So kailangan talaga ng evaluation kasi baka sobrang laki pala ng nire-risk mo and hindi naman mag-work yung new techniques na naiisip ng organization nyo. Last is use feedback data from previous designs. So by doing this kasi makikita mo if meron bang improvement yung bago yung design process and development from before. And also magagamit nyo rin, nyo rin mga feedback dito ng, uh, in your future other designs. So that is the summary flowchart of the various stages and activities involved in the design and, and development process. And by structuring the design process in this way using itong flowchart, it is possible to Control the various stages so you will be able to carefully handle and control the design process, which is crucial to avoid stifling the creativity of the designs. Kaya kanina rin sabi, ang working environment dapat urgent yet informal ang approach. Kasi if too formal, nawawala yung creativeness and fun sa workplace. Next, check that they have been completed. Sa flowchart kanina, di ba, napaka-comprehensive. Masusure mo talaga na every procedure and practices are carefully considered. Decide which functions need to be brought in and, and at what stage. So kanina din sa flowchart, nabanggit na you are not just going to assign tasks basta-basta. Such a function kasi must be aligned doon sa kung nasaan na kayong stage sa design process and development to address talaga yung mga problems. Estimate the level of resources needed. I think naiintindihan naman natin to lahat kasi sa design process and development, hindi lang naman internal yun. Um, need rin ng outside resources para maging successful ang design process and development. So through using yung flowchart kanina, mag-guide yung organization kung ano-ano at gano ba karaming resources kailangan nila. Next is the certain features that make control of the design process difficult. First is that no design will ever be complete in the sense that with effort, some modification or improvement cannot be made. I think we are all aware that for a certain task to complete, we have to exert effort talaga. If we want something or if we want to see major changes, pagbubutihin natin and magbibigay talaga tayo ng effort. Second is, a few designs are entirely novel. So lalo na yung mga new products and services, di ba? They have elements or something talaga sa kanila that is so new and original that it has never been seen. And kapag ganon, the control of the design process is magiging mahirap talaga. Although worth it yun kasi bago lang eh, walang kamukha. Third, the longer the time spent on a design, the less the increase in the value of the design tends to be unless a technological breakthrough is achieved. 
Sa tingin ko kaya difficult ito kasi kapag matagal naman ginagawa ang isang bagay, mas lumalaki yung cost and mas prone to many unnecessary changes. So to prevent this, the diminishing unnecess- the diminishing return on design effort must be carefully managed. But it must be balanced with the need for acceptable design resolution and solid documentation. Because when a design is not adequately resolved and effectively conveyed, production risk increases. Fourth, the design process is information intensive and the timing of decision making both by the clients and the design team is critical to the efficiency of the ent- entire process. Dito sinasabi lang na hindi natin pwedeng i-manage uh, and i-manage ang design process in the same way kung paano natin minamanage ang production process by tasks. There are may there may be up to 10 information flows for each task with the ratio of information flows to task being very variable. There are also a large number of concurrent and interconnected operations that require talent and experience to resolve effectively. Lastly, external and or internal customers will often impose limitations on design time and cost. So if we remember, internal customers are the people within the organizations and external, ito na yung customer. This one pertains to the difficulty of a design project whose completion date isn't implicitly set, whether by a promise to a customer, the start of a trade show or exhibition, a seasonal deadline, a production schedule, or some other constraint. Siyempre parang lahat naman kasi talaga meron end or deadline or kaya limitations. Now let's proceed to the total design process. It says here that the Quality of design is not just about the ability to meet the needs or requirements ng customer. It is also about the activities of design and development. So sinasabi rin dito na uh, sobrang laki ng influence ng design process sa may overall performance ng organization. No? And makikita yung mga yon sa mga successful company na meron tayo ngayon. The whole process is also referred to as total design and the term simultaneous engineering has been used. So this is an integrated approach to a new product or service introduction similar in many, many ways to quality function deployment or QFD. Later on, mas discuss pa tong QFD. From the concept to final deployment, from the concept to final deployment of the product or service into the marketplace, including servicing and maintenance, in total design or simultaneous engineering na similar sa QFD entails deploying multifunction teams or task forces to ensure that research, design, development, manufacturing, purchasing, supply, and marketing all work in parallel. Most companies now recognize the need to develop and successfully deploy an end-to-end product or service creation process. Since this is a major factor kung magbubumba yung product or service mo, di ba? Kaya dapat sa creation process pa lang lahat is considered na talaga para maging successful. And also to ensure na rin that the product or service requirements are translated from identification of service, identification of need or potential need into the reality of a tangible new or revised product and or service. Such a project, product creation process or service creation process will transgress the whole organization and involve the engagement of all functional areas. As an example of such process is makikita dito sa figure 6.2. Of course, una ang brainstorming of ideas for a new product. Then after that, from marketing to research and development to manufacturing and back to marketing again, they will identify whether that ideas for a new product has an opportunity in the market. And once they prove na meron, yung whole PCP and SCP or the total design process and development will happen. Then eventually, that product or service will be launched in the market. Next is the quality function deployment or yung QFD na sinasabi kanina. So ito na nga yung QFD. And then this is also known as the house of quality. This is a framework which is developed by Dr. Yoji Akao. So ito siyang nasa gilid. It was originally developed in Japan noong 1966. 
The House of Quality or HOQ concept is initially referred to as quality tables and has been used successfully by manufacturers of integrated circuits, synthetic rubber, constru construction equipment, engines, home appliances, clothing, and electronics, mostly Japanese. So example ng mga business, businesses na gumagamit ng concept na to are yung Ford and the General Motors and other organization, including AT&T, Bell Laboratories, and marami pang iba. So in Japan, its design application include public services and retail outlets. Quality Function Deployment, or QFD, is a system for designing a product or service that are based on customer requirements with the participation of members of all functions of the supplier organization. It translates the customer's requirements into the appropriate technical requirements for each stage. The activities included in QFD are market research. So of course, this is where you study the demands of the market, the current trends, and even their wants. Next, next is the basic research. This one is, I think, sa mismong product or service na balak mong i-offer sa kanila. Siyempre, kailangan naman talaga ng research to generate ideas for new product. Innovation, I think we are all, we all know naman that this one is very important sa mga businesses. So para ma-maintain ang position din ng product mo sa market, you always have to innovate. Dapat there is always something na bago sa product or service na ino-offer mo and para din hindi ma-expire or maging stagnant ang business mo. Next is concept design. So this one is an early phase of the design process. Dito makikita yung general design process or outlines of function. It, it includes the design of interaction, experiences, processes, and strategies. Next is prototype testing. So this is the process of testing your prototype with real users to validate design decision before development starts. Ito pwedeng ano, testing muna sa mga member ng organization and then kukuhanin yung opinion nila whether worth it ba yung pag-aksaya nila ng oras na yun or gagaw yung gagawin nila or nagtitik lang sila ng sobrang laking, laking risks. Basta ang goal dito is to identify problem and areas of improvement early so you can make the necessary changes prior to development and build the product that meets users' needs and expectations. Next one is the final product or service testing. So kanina, prototype lang yon Dito naman, ito na yung final product or output mismo ng design or development process. So dito, pwedeng mag-launch ka na sa market ng pakunti-kunti lang and then i-observe mo if pumatok ba siya or hindi or, or hindi pinapansin. Yung mga ganun. So this is done to measure the performance of properties of a product. Last one is the after-sales service and troubleshooting. So just like I have mentioned earlier, once the product is, is successfully launched in the market, hindi pa daw natatapos ang gampanin ng isang organization. They have to ensure that the products or services are meeting the customer's requirements, needs, or wants. So the organization have to do an after-sales support, sometimes called after-sales service, which is, which is any services provided after the customer has purchased a product. So, ginagawa to to ensure yung satisfaction and also to provide service na rin kapag merong problems na encounter si customer. Typically, an example of this includes support regarding warranty service, training, or repair and upgrades. So, those are the seven activities involved in QFD process. Those activities are performed by people with different skills in a team whose composition depends on many factors, including the product or services being developed and the size of the operation. If the organization fail to include kahit isang activity sa QFD process, it will limit the success of the design activities and will result in some offering that doesn't necessarily satisfy the customer. Kagaya sa iba pang bagay, ang unang step para magawa ang quality function deployment is to have a team. Of course, hindi kasi basta-basta ng team lang yan, ha? basta qualified, trained, skilled, and competent team. Its purpose is to take the needs of the market and translate them into such a form that they can be satisfied within the operating unit and delivered to the customer. An effective QFD team must be able to answer these three questions, the who, what, and how. First is, who are the customers? So, napapansin nyo, di ba, parang uh, medyo nagiging paulit-ulit talaga. 
Kasi importante talaga na ma-identify muna sino ba ang target market ng business mo para ma-provide mo talaga yung tamang products or services sa kanila. Who may be decided by asking who will benefit from the successful introduction of this product, service, or process? And once you have identified your target market, the second question, which, which is what does the customer need, will be considered. So this one can be ascertained through interview, questionnaire, focus group processes, or from the knowledge and judgment of the QFD team members. Kaya nga di ba sa organization mayroong research and development team, so ito rin yung role nila. After that, papasok na yung third question, which is, how will the needs be satisfied? This third question is the most uh, complicated and difficult to determine as it will depend on the attributes of the product, service, or process under development. In addition, dito rin sa stage na to, yung pinakamaraming gagawin na action steps in a QFD strategic plan. Dito sa QFD and yung QFD team, it ensures that more effort is used to obtain vital customer information. It may increase the initial planning time in a particular um, development project, but the overall time, including design and redesign, taken to bringing a product or service to the market will be reduced. With that being said, kailangan everyone in an organization from the marketing people, design staff, including yung mga architects, engineers, physicists, chemists, and etc., and production or operations personnel are working closely together from the moment na may ma-generate na ideas for new product or service. Therefore, kailangan mapalitan na yung throwing it over the wall na approach, which are used in many organizations. So, uh, makikita nyo yan dito sa figure 6.3, ang visual representation ng throw it over the wall approach kung saan merong solid wall existing between each pair of functions and this approach din na to, there is just a little communication between each functions kasi makikita nyo nga merong wall doon in between functions so sa approach kasi na to, once ang isang department completes their part of a project they will just pass it off to the next group of our department tapos ayun na yun so wala nga masyadong departmental communication di ba so it is vital pa naman kasi to reduce the potential problems from arising and through constant communication din kasi nagkakaroon ng delegation of tasks within organization. So that approach is ineffective and inefficient now. Unlike the House of Quality, we, it provides an organization with the means of internal departmental or interfunctional planning and communications, starting with the so-called customer attributes or CAs. So CAs are phrases that the customer use to describe product, process, or service characteristics. Tapos yung mga CAs na yon yung i-examine ng QFD team to generate ideas for new product or service. The QFD or House of Quality Tables. This figure 6.4 just shows the essential components of the quality table or HOQ diagram. The summary of this HOQ diagram is that it is built to show how customer requirements relate directly to the ways and methods companies can use to achieve those requirements. HOQ is considered the primary tool used during quality function deployment to help facilitate group decision making. So this is the uh, no, visual representation of this um, house quality table. So hindi ko na masyadong i-discuss since Visual representation lang naman siya. So I'm just going to tell you the summary of it. So overall, this HOQ diagram refers down on a well-known process for product development that is inspired by customer desires for product or process development and anchored by the capabilities and resources of the organization seeking to meet those desires. Kaya sa table din, ang ka kauna-unahan dyan, if makikita nyo, is identifying and ranking of the customer requirements. HOQ is a process of listening to customer, translating their desires into a written plan, prioritizing steps of execution based on what is most important to the customer and putting a realistic plan on paper. So this whole QFD process is very time-consuming. Kung titignan lang na ganyan, parang madali lang siya, but it, it, but it is not. It requires careful planning and commit committed leaders and as well as all the members of an organization para maging successful. In addition, itong HOQ or House of Quality is just a part of a larger process which is yung QFD nga or quality function deployment. This represents quality monitoring, a focus on the function of execution of a quality plan, 
and the application of resources for deployment of that plan. So that's my report. The next topic is about specifications and standards, which will be explained by Mr. John Mark Lee Cook. Hello everyone, my name is John Mark Lee Cook and my topic is all about specifications and standard. First thing is first, so ano nga ba yung specification? So yung specification is a detailed description of the design and materials used to make something. It is the act of processing, specifying. For example, kapag gusto mo bumili ng phone, hindi lang basta design yung titignan, kundi yung tinatawag na specs or kung okay ba yung quality nito and performance. Uh, example na ito, kunyari sa cellphone, yung camera kung okay ba yung megapixels niya, yung battery kung okay ba yung image niya, yung processor ng phone, kung strap dragon ba to or whatsoever. Yun. Next naman is standardization. So ano nga ba to? Standardization does not guarantee the best design or specification is selected. It may be argued that the whole process of standardization slows down the rate and direction of technology development and affects what is produced. So, ito yung standardization. For example, ito yung, ito yung uh, service based on consumer sensus or the relevant parties in the industry. It also helps in ensuring the safety and compatibility of goods. For example, nito sa cellphone, hindi siya magiging available kung hindi kumusa yung specification sa standard. Tapos yung connection ng dalawa naman na yan ay ano, dapat ma-reach or pumasa yung specification sa set industry standard ng company. Next po. It is useful to define a specification. The, the International Standard Organization or ISO define it in ISO 8402 of 1986. So dito, sinasabi lang dyan, yung ISO naman is the document that prescribes the requirements with which the product or service has to confront. A document that gives a detailed statement or description of requires in which product, service, or process must comply cannot regard as a specification. For example naman yan, kunyari yung Wesleyan. Uh, kaya siya naging autonomous university kasi pasado yung school sa standard na pinag-applyan niya. Uh, example din yun, yung NAUST. Uh, kaya siya, ano, ISO is certificate kasi uh, pumasa yung standard ng mismong school na yun sa required standard. Kaya yung ibang company o ibang department uh, nakalagay doon pag sinerge nyo isa siyang ISO standard. So, ba't nga ba? Ba't nga ba kailangan pa ng ISO standard? Cert certificate. Ito kasi yun. It helps to improve your business credibility and authority as well as over efficiency of the business. Next part. The basic requirements of the specifications that gives. First, uh, ito yung anim na basic requirements for specifications that nitignan ng mga buyers. Kasi yung ginagamit nila para pagkumpurin yung product or kung anong product yung mas efficient at the same time and good quality at worth it pa yung pera na paggagasa sa nila. Una, performance. Requirements of the product or service in measurable terms. Uh, di ba yung product na available sa market? Kailangan nila muna ma-reach yung specific standard ng isang industry bago sila ilabas sa public. As yung parameters naman, Ito yung additional features sa nagpapayunig sa isang product. For example, yung product natin ay TV. Yung parameter nito is resolution, display type, special features, and feature mode. Tapos sa uh, materials naman, ito yung ginamit sa isang product para magbuo siya. Kunyari, ito yung LED or uh, screen, saka yung glass. Sa metal production naman, uh, ito yung delivery of the service. Refers to other application specifications or documents. For example, dito sa Pinas, may agency na in charge for inspection. Bago i-deliver yung goods, ay yun yung Bureau of Customs. Sila kasi yung nagkaharang para ma-inspect muna yung product. Doon siya nakapasok sa inspections, testing, checking of requirements. Next. 
Good specifications are usually the product of much discussion, deliberation, and shifting of information data and represent tangible output from a QFD team. So, kanina nga nabasa kanina yung, na-report kanina yung QFD team. So, siya nga daw siyang tool, team tool ka, that captures customer requirements and translate those needs into characteristic about the product service. Uh, dito kailangan ma-address yung customer needs na sinasabi yan. Ang role niyan is mag-gather yung data doon about sa feedback ng customer. Tapos kapag nakuha na nila yung information and data, tsaka pa lang nila itatransform yung information into characteristics about doon sa service and product. Uh, it's all about a great advancement and innovative. Next, design quality in the, in the service sector. In terms of design, it is possible to recognize the three distinct elements in the service package. The physical elements or facilitating goods, the explicit service or sensual benefits, and implicit service or psychological benefits. In addition, the particular characteristic of service delivery system may be itemized in intangibility, perishability, stimulating, heterogeneity. So first muna, ano, ano ba muna yung three ele physical elements na yun? First is facilitating goods. This is where the products and service helps an organization achieve its objectives. In other words, they assist and support sensual benefit, benefits. For example, is massage. Sa psychological benefits naman na tinatawag, uh, sila yung features which the consumer may sense only valuably. For example naman nito is privacy of loan office, security of our light parking lot. Sa intangibility naman, it refers to a lack of palpable tactical property make it difficult to assess service quality. Tapos, eto naman, for example, ay bookings of accommodation, theaters, and various sites. Sa, sa perishability naman, it is used in marketing to describe the way in which service capacity cannot be stored for sale in the future. For example, an airline can only sell seats on an prior to the departure. The service is only available for the definite period of time. Example naman ito, pag may, cer may certain time lang yung service na available. Kunyari sa airlines, may mga flight na may fixed time talaga na available. Kung maga may oras lang siya na service na available. Sa stimulate ni Liman, is the relation between two events assumed to be happening at the same time in a frame of reference. For example, when we go to a hairstylist, the service haircut is being consumed by us. Meaning lang nun tayo yung nakikinabang sa service kasi ako yung nagpagupit. Next is hete heterogeneity. The term heterogeneity describes the uniqueness of service offerings. Next. In the design of services, it is useful to classify them in some way. So, ito yung five categories. First is service factory. Service factory. The factory can be source of customer service in addition to a place where products are manufactured. Uh, example lang ito. Ito yung pinagbumula ng lahat ng product. Ito yung pinagagawa ng product. Kunyari, eh, factory ng Nestle or factory ng Lucky Me. Tapos service shop. Any building of part, therefore, where appliances, equipment, instrument, and machinery are sold, serviced, or repaired. Uh, next is mass service. Uh, example lang ng mass service. They provide, sila yung provide ng uh, mass service about, uh, example lang nito is supermarkets, rail service, and airports. Professional service naman. It is a service requiring specialized knowledge and skill usually of a mental or intellectual nature and usually requir requiring a license, certification, or registration. So ito daw yung mga uh, professional service na tinatawag sa mga tao. Kunyari sila yung mga engineer, architect, and etc. So sa personal service naman, sila yung mga accounting, consulting, or 
actual science, law, performing arts and health, including veterinary service. So yung connection lang naman ng dalawa na yan, yung both professional service and personal service, kumbaga yung professional service sila nga yung tinatawag na engineer architect. So ang below nun yung personal service, tinatawag kumbaga under ng engineer yung mga trabahador, yung sila yung gumagawa mismo ng bahay. Tapos yung mga architect naman, sila yung nagpaplano. And engineer. Next po. Several service attributes have particular significance for the design of service operations. The first is labor intensity. The ratio of labor cost due to the value of asset and equipment. Use people versus equipment based services. Second is contact, the proportion of the total time required to provide the same service for which the consumer is present in the system. Third is interaction, the extent to which the consumer actively enters in the service process to change the content of the service. This includes customer participation to provide information from which needs can be assessed and customer feedback from which satisfaction level can be interfered. Fourth is customization, which includes choices providing one more selection from a range of options, which can be single or fixed and adaptation. The interactions process, which the requirement is designed, designed and delivered to the match the need. Fifth is nature of service act. It's either tangible, perceptible to touch, and can be owned, or intangible. And last is receive or service. It's either people or things. Next part. So dito, uh, uh, dito lang sinabi ni, ano, according to Parasuman and others, ayan yung mga limang dimensions na in which is between the relationship of service quality and customer perception. Ito yung ginagamit na measure para malaman yung quality na isang product. Sayo, sayo, kaya yung lima na yan, reliability, responsiveness, assurance, and empathy and tangible. Next po. So dito may merong ano, there are two major forces that are shaping the characterizing legal services. First is market push down commodity, commoditization. And the second one is pervasive development and uptake information technology. So, ito lang yan. Dahil sa continuous development ng technology, yung mga product and goods ngayon ay commoditized na. So, ano nga ba yung commoditization? It is defined as the process by which goods and the economic value are distinguishable in terms of attributes end up becoming simple commodities in the eyes of the market consumer. For example, ay yung mga flash drives, computers, and tablets. Ito yung mga dating unique na, na item na ngayon, parang part na lang siya ng basic needs natin kasi dati hindi naman lahat ng tayo meron ito. Ngayon nga is face-to-face -face na. Kumbaga, dati, hindi naman required na, hindi naman required yung, hindi naman lahat may internet. So in other words, makikita natin dito yung development na isang product through technological advancement. Tapos, there is a need para makamura. To identify the task, to identify the task in the market is increasingly unlikely to tolerate expensive lawyers for that can be delegated to less expert and less expensive people for working with specificated process and system and to identify the new and different client needs emerging. Next po. Tapos dito naman, sinasabi lang dito yung mga trabaho ng lawyers na ngayon ay mas napadali na dahil sa technology. Tapos ito naman figure na to yung... Next, yan. Tapos ito namang figure na to yung nirepresent lang nito yung evolution ng legal service services. Nakalakay dito yung continuous na innovation at kung paano yung pagbabago ng panahon sa, ng, para sa mga lawyers. Next. Failure mode, effective 
critical and critically analysis or FME CA. FME CA is the study of potential failures to determine their effects. If the results of FMEA are wrong and in order of seriousness, then the word critically is added to give FMCAC. So, simple lang yan. Ito yung analysis na dinetermine kung saan part ba ng product yung nag-fail. Tapos, ginagawa rin yung analysis na yan para malaman kung anong product yung malaking chance na mag-fail. Para at least ma-reduce yung risk na pwede mangyari sa isang product. Next po. Failure mode. The anticipated conditions of operation are used as the background or to study most probably failure mode location and mechanism of the product or system and its components. Ito naman, kung saan, kung saan nagpe-fail yung mismo system na tinatawag. Tapos next is failure effect. The potential failures are studied to determine their probable effects on the performance of the whole product, process, or service, and the effects of the various components on each other. As ito naman yung magiging epekto ng failures over performance ng isang product. And lastly, failure critically, criticality. The potential failures on various parts of the product or service system are examined to determine the severity of each failure effects in terms of lowering of performance, safety hazards, total loss of function. So for example lang naman ito, ito yung for worst case scenarios na mga pwedeng mangyari kapag nag-exceed yung limitations ng certain product. Next po. Special FMECA pro promas and software are available and they set out the steps of the analysis as follows. Next. Number one, identify the product or system components or process function. That's number two, list all possible failures mode of each component. Number three, set down the effects that each mode of failure would have on function of the product or system. That's number four, list all the possible cause of each failure mode. Number five, assess numerically the failure modes on a scale from one to 10. Experience and reliability data should be used together with the judgment to determine values on scale one to 10. So yung P, uh, represent the yung the probability of each failure mode occurring. So yung S naman is the seriousness of criticality of the failure. And in D naman, the difficulty of detecting the failure before the product or survey is used by the consumer. Number six, calculate the product of the ratings. And seven, indicate briefly the corrective action required and if possible, which person the third department, function, or groups is responsible and expected completion date. Next po. Tapos ito yung pinakitang, ano, ito lang naman yung virtual representation ng table na ginagamit kapag nag-rate ng product. As you can see from being 1 to lowest and 10 being the highest. Kaya mas mababa yung result, mas okay yung lower chance na magkaroon ng failure. And this is the end of my report. Well, the next reporter is Joshua Neves. So, thank you, Mr. Lito. Hello, everyone. I am Joshua. And the topic that is assigned to me is the moment of truth. So ano nga ba ang moment of truth? So it is the moment in time when a customer comes into contact with the people, system, procedures, or product of an organization, which leads to the customer making a judgment about the quality of the organization's services or products. So MOT or moment of truth ay parang first impression ng isang customer sa produkto ng organization or company. Halimbawa, ikaw, meron kang product na sa sobrang curious ka, gusto mong itry. Tapos nung first time mo na na-experience, dun mo malalaman kung okay ba siya or hindi. 
parang pag nakita mo ay dun mo malalaman ang katotohan. Another example, ako, hindi pa ako nakakapagtry ng ng gipsal. Tapos, gustong gusto ko siyang itry. E di, nagpunta ako ngayon sa ng gipsalan. Tapos, kumain ako. Moment of truth. Kumbaga, ito na yung mabubuksan natin kung ayos ba talagang kumain dito. Madami ba silang side dishes? Okay ba yung mga crew? Or mura ba? So, next is yung samot analysis. Kumbaga, tatanyahin natin kung may ari ng business kung nasatisfy nasatisfy ba tayo maari <coughs> maaring sa reaction natin o di kaya sa feedback so next po so the links between good design and managing the business in other words the relation or connection between the two so the first is leadership and management first bullet listening is designed into the organization listening this is one of the important factors sa isang organization every employee merong great ideas need ng mga nakakataas na pakinggan din daw ang bawat suwasyon at hinaing ng bawat empleyado especially yung mga employees na nakakasalamuha ng mga customer physically because sometimes customer tend to send feedback to employee. So next is management communicates the importance of good design in good partnership and vice versa. Example, si company A, meron silang magandang idea na nagpapabuse ng performance ng company. But meron kulang. Hindi nila ma-reach yung expected amount ng sales. Tapos, yung partner nila na si Company B, bad performance, pero panalo naman sa pagdating sa sales. Ang gagawin nila, mag-share sila ng design ng ideas para both companies maging equal. Si Company A, hihingi ng idea para ma-boost ang sales kasama ng good performance nila. Si Company B naman, hihingi ng idea kay Company A para mag-improve ang performance ng company. So sa madaling salita, nagtutulungan yung dalawa. So third is, a management style is adapted that fosters innovation and creativity and that motivates employees to work together effectively wills avoiding the fear and failure. So ito yung way or pamamaraan ng management can help encourage and promote the development of something in terms of innovation and creativity. In that way, all employees would participate and be motivated to work effectively and efficiently. Kung mas maeenggan nyo ang bawat isa na aralin at galingan sa pagkatrabaho, Kasi bago sa kanila yung way ng pag-work nila. And because they are motivated, nandun yung urge nila para i-perfect ang trabaho nila. So the next is customer strategy and planning. So una dito is customer is designed into organization as focus to shape policy and strategy decisions. Customer is always part of an organization. Tandaan natin yan. Kasi sila yung target ng every business and organization. In order to know if our policy and strategy is effective, kailangan natin malaman ang side ng mga customer if they do agree with the policies being implemented. If they were satisfied by the service done with the plan strategies, and etc. So the next is designers and customer communicate directly. So designers are able to communicate with the customer directly, not verbally but through effects of the executive design or in layman's term, the plans and strategies. 
a designer is able to know if the design they made were as effective as it satisfied the needs and wants of each of the customers. Kumbaga, nakakapag-communicate sila through actions. Malalaman ng designer if effective ba yung ginawang design niya based sa feedback and reaction ng customer. So, dun malalaman ng designer kung meron bang kailangan i-maintain or baguhin or i-improve. So, the next is customer are included in the design process. So, as I mentioned in bullet one, customer are part of an organization. The reason why the customer are included in the design process is because the customer are the main target of every business and establishments. So the next is customers are helped to articulate and participate in the understanding of their own requirements. So sa pamamagitan ng design ng mga designer, matutulungan natin ang customer na mag-express ng kanilang ideal experience in terms of customer service and satisfaction. For example, nasa loob tayo ng lobby hotel, may papasok na customer or guest, di ba? Magtatanong tayo na, what do you want, sir or ma'am? Or kung ano gusto nila. <clears throat> Tapos sila, sasabihin nila, sa atin na gusto ko sana na yung kukunin kong room is ano sea view or city view or kung ano man ang gusto nila sa so simple tanong mo na what do you want mag-articulate si customer mag-articulate si customer na gusto niya na mangyari during their stay mag -e express at magpa-participate sa tanong mo. Participate in the understanding of own requirements, yung ideas nila, ay sineshare nila. So, next is, system are in place to ensure that the changing needs of customer inform changes to policy and strategy. So, halimbawa, 3 p.m. Dapat ay nasa tea lounge na sila. Pero nagbago ang plan ni guest. Gusto niya na magpunta sa buffet area para kumain ng late lunch. Para ma-inform ang staff, need niya tumawag gamit ang phone or paging system. Para i-check if may available table pa ba sa buffet area, then by informing the staff tungkol sa changes, mag i, -i strategize ulit yung staff kung ano ang gagawin para ma-meet kung ano ang gusto ng guest and need to inform of new policy applied halimbawa if 3 pm gusto ng gusto ng guest sa restaurant inform siya ng policy na kailangan 54 15 minutes before 3 pm is nandoon siya sa buffet area so the next is design and innovation performance measures are incorporated into policy and strategy reviews. So, malalaman natin kung effective and efficient ba ang design plans and strategy na na-implement if mataas ang performance rate or satisfaction rate from customers. Remember that the customers are a big part of an organization and they are the ones na nakaka-encounter ng policies and strategies na ginawa ng management. If they feel satisfied, then it will reflect sa rating ng, na ibinibigay nila. Example, meron biglang nakaka-receive ng survey out of nowhere. How happy you are with your experience rate 1 to 10? So the last is the design process responds quickly to customers. So, by informing customers, malalaman ng customers if fit ba sila sa company policies, services, o hindi. Halimbawa, yung Apple, naglabas ng plans nila about iPhone 13 Pro Max. So, customer responds quickly by doing research if maganda ba yung specification 
or pasok ba sa daily lives nila o hindi. So if pasok, kukunin nila if they might consider getting other brands phone. So next po. So, people, their management and satisfaction. First is, people are encouraged to gain a holistic view of design and product service creation within the organization. So, when planning and strategizing, employees must see and experience a complete view of design plans, products, and services of the company. Bago ma-implement ang design, dapat well-informed ang employees about their services and sa changes ng service nila. Para if ever na makasalamuha sila ng customer, maaari nila i-share yung personal experience nila with the service. So second is, there is commitment to design teams and their motivation particularly in cross-functional teamwork. For example, quality, function, development, deployment teams. So third is training programs are designed with respect to, des to design in terms of people skills training. So different training programs for every task, job and departments. May mga programs na designed for lobby, which is more interpersonal skills and intrapersonal skills. Meron for kitchen works, meron din physical works who also need both inter and intrapersonal skills when interacting. So, susunod naman is training helps integrate design actives into business. So nakakatulong ang training para mapagsama-sama at mapag-combine at mabuo ang mga plans, designs, policies, and strategies into business. Or in simple term, mapag-iisa ang mga designs at matake, at matatake ito in action. So the next is training impacts on design. Example, homing creativity and keeping people up to date with design concept and creativity. So training helps and developments. Training helps and developments people creativity and to be competitive sa pamamagitan ng pagko-conceptualize ng new and better ideas, plans, and strategies with the same goal to succeed. So the next one naman is design activities are communicated including new product or services, service, service concepts. So lahat ng design, pinlano ng, ng, ng mga ideas ay dapat malaman ng lahat. In that way, makakakuha ka ng feedback right away if, if it is possible to implement the designs or not. And you can get ideas if ipapalit, if it's not for it to be implemented. So next is job satisfaction is harness to foster good design. So once na, matas, once na masatisfy mismo ang mga employees sa work nila, meaning good ideas were produced during the handle and it is ready to take into action and share to customers. Para masatisfy ang target, which is the customer, dapat satisfied tayo mismo sa performance ng company para di tayo mapahiya. So last is the result of employee surveys are feedback into the design process. So may mga time na need ng feedback ng company from the employees themselves. Every feedback from the survey must be noticed. At kung meron nagsasuggest sa survey na baguhin tungkol sa products and services, it must be implemented well again 
and see kung ano ang better option na gawin para magpatuloy ang magandang performance ng company. So, next is resource management. So, first is knowledge is managed proactively including investment in technology. So, every information that needs to be shared must be informed to every employee. Merong announcement sa pamagitan ng emails, announcement, board, and blast message. <clears throat> so, the next one is information is shared effectively and efficiently in the organization. So when planning and making a strategy, the next step we make is to execute the design. Padalasan kapag kinakailangan ng company ng mga new sets of system and materials, we communicate with our partner supplier na magsasuggest ang supplier on what best for the company. Kung ano yung mga bagong trend in managing the company that makes their plan being executed, effective, and efficient. So the next is past experience and learning is captured from design, projects, and staff. The next is information. Information resources are available for planning design products projects so in for information resources are sometimes called database of the company naglalaman ito ng mga information ng mga purchases na ginawa ng mga customers pwede natin malaman sa database na ito yung mga services and products na tinatangkilik ng mga customers and kung ano ba yung best option will be considered again in planning and designing kasi the company must speak sa kung saan ay mas mapapalago ang business in terms of service products and sales or profits so fight is supplier contribute contribute to innovation creativity and design concepts so last is concurrent engineering and design is integrated through the supply chains. So the executing of engineering and design at the same time has a huge effect in supply chain as both are all part of the organization plans and strategies. Parehas ng nasa supply chain management, engineering and designs are considered as raw material raw materials and will be transformed into final product which represent yung goal ng isang company or business. So next po. So dito naman po tayo sa process management. So first, design is placed at the center of process planning to integrate different functions within the organization and form partnership outside the organization. So a design, a design is a process of out understanding the customer needs and creating the product and service that suits them. It should be the core of the planning because remember the main target of every business are the customers. And the partnership na sinasabi dito ay di lang about sa partnership with the other companies, kundi pati na din sa partnership between us and customers. Its simplest form, it is give, it is a give and take factor. So number two is, Process thinking is used to resolve design problems and foster teamwork within the organization and with external partners. So process thinking is a, team, is a term used to analyze the 
process na na-execute ng business and determines the causes of the problems. And sa pamamaraan na ito, malalaman natin ang ways to, over, to overcome the problems by doing teamwork. Papasok din dito yung help from the or other organization or external business partner na meron tayo to help us overcome the problem that a company usually has. So the last one is <clears throat> the last the last one is impact on society and business performance. So consideration is given to how design of a product or services impact on first environment. So some of the projects designed by organization will impact environment, especially if one organization plans on reducing smoke from vehicles. They might consider producing and innovating vehicles that are using batteries to work. In that case, smokes that might cause pollution in the environment will be lessened. So the second one is the recyclability, recyc recyclability and disposal of materials. So rec recyclability and disposal of materials, yung ibang mga materials na ginagamit na pwede pang pakinabangan for the next project, Tapos yung iba na hindi pwede gamitin, pwede i-dispose properly. Meron namang mga junk shops at iba pa. So the next is packaging and, and waste of resources. So yung ibang mga materials na nasisira at nasasayang kasi mali yung paraan sa paggamit or di maingat. Imbes na pwedeng pangpakinabangan, it will turn into into <coughs> waste of resources of material. Additional, waste stage means careless yung paggamit ng bagay kaya nasisira. Kung baga is hindi nila iniingatan yung bagay kaya mabilis masira. So the next is the local economy. Example, reduction of labor requirements. So yung mga materials, <coughs> so the last is there is understanding of the impact of design on the business result, both financial and non-financial. So the local economy, since madaming na po-produce ang mga organization, outrageous number of workers are also needed. Di lang organization ang, mga, ang nagbe-benefit ng design nila, kundi ang mga local workers din. In, in terms of wages and profits, financial result of profits gains sales investment from Partners, investment from clients. So the non-financial, real estate, vehicle, and other non-monetary forms of assets. So next slide. Po. So this is the design process. So effective people management skills are essential for good design. This includes the ability to listen and to communicate to motivate employees and encourage teamwork, as well as the ability to create an organizational climate which is conductive to creativity and continuous innovation. So this table, this table or process shows that the active coordination and contribution of each part is the business that are being connected by the design process and effective planning, strategizing, and management. <clears throat> Sabi dito, yung, yung suppliers have a different communication 
and partnership with the organization or business. So, as the design process is ongoing, patuloy din ang pakikipag-coordinate ng organization sa supplier para maisagawa yung design process ng maayos. At yan yung partnership between the supplier and organization. The next naman is yung direct communication or partnership ng organization with the customers. As what I have mentioned earlier, the customer are the main target of the design and plans na ginawa ng isang organization. Kumbaga, the customers are the receiver of the, of the action na ginawa ng isang organization. At yan ang matatawag na partnership between the organization and the customers. <clears throat> Sa madaling salita, hindi magwo-work ang design process without the partnership. From, from the supplier to an organization, to an organization to customers. Pag wala ang supplier, di magwo-work ang plans ng organization. Kung walang customers, walang magre-receive ng actions na ginawa ng organizations. So, this is my report po. Thank you so much for listening. That's the end of our report. We hope that you gained something or some learnings during our discussion. Again, I am Rikaline Martin, and my members are John Martin Cook and Joshua Nieves. Thank you for listening, Paul.